Hey, welcome to Pusher TV. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install our one-piece heavy-duty hot side charge tube for the 6.7 Power Stroke equipped Super Duties like the one I have behind me. This video is gonna cover your 2011, basically your first truck with that motor, all the way up to 2022, which is early 22 now. They haven't changed the design of that tube very much, so the install process is identical the whole way through. A good thing to keep in mind is this video is meant to give you additional information, different angles of view, things you can represent via video format versus print. Our parts always do come with a set of very nice full color step-by-step -step instructions. We have the parts list here on the front that you can go through and make sure you have everything prior to starting your install. So these are definitely your go-to for all your fine details, torque specs, things like that. I'm just gonna hopefully give you extra information to make your life easier. So let's get started. So we have our hood open. You can see our hot side charge tube is what we're gonna be replacing is here. This truck already has our cold side upgrade, which is definitely a must for these trucks. All we really need to do is loosen this clamp here and then expand the C-clip down there at the end so that we can pop the tube loose. And I'll show you how to do that right now. I like to take the coupler completely off the intercooler right away. On the older trucks, the older they get, the more this coupler tends to want to like stick to the intercooler. This truck only has about 8,000 miles on it right now. And so on the older ones, you may need to get a pick or something like this to get under here and help just like separate. You can kind of work your way around the coupler like this and just kind of separate it from the intercooler. This one hasn't actually stuck to the intercooler yet, so it's pretty easy to pull off. So I just pull it off and up like that. Now you can take two flat screwdrivers and you're basically gonna put one there on the C-clip and just leave it in there and one on the other side, just to expand that C-clip up. The thing is, is once you do that, this little dip right here still is in the groove usually. So a lot of times you need to push the tube towards all that and that'll allow that, this guy to come up and out of there and then you can pull it off. So this is a C-clip right here that we're just working on and it has this little plastic retainer that helps hold it open in the factory for assembly and also retains it to the tube. So we need to just pop that guy off you can take a screwdriver and just get it basically between the retainer and the tube. Just gotta do both sides. And that allows you to take your clip off the tube because we're gonna need to reuse this one on the new tube. So we're looking at the same end of the charge tube as we were just working on the factory one. This is the adapter here that has your O-ring groove. You notice I have the uh, bubble wrap that the part came wrapped in laying on the bench. It's really nice to do that. It protects your powder coat while you do any prep to your parts. So I just need to put my O-ring in the groove, which is really straightforward. It's a little hard to do backwards and upside down while the camera's watching you, but it just sits in that groove. And it's what seals and keeps your boost between the compressor outlet and your charge tube. So that guy's in there. I will, before I slide this on the turbo, throw a little silicone spray on this and the compressor outlet. And now I just need to set my C-clip in place as well. And so when you go to install this, you're gonna be, if you're standing on the side of the truck and putting it on the turbo, this thing's gonna be kinda of like this orientation. So I like to have the little drop in the C-clip on the groove that's facing up. And that ends up in pretty much the exact same orientation as the factory one had. All of our tubes are welded with the slots in the same orientation. And so that allows you to get your two screwdrivers on either side the same way I removed the factory one if you ever have to take this off to work on the truck. So your last step of pre-assembly is I like to go ahead and put the silicone coupler on your outlet end um, before putting it in the truck. Silicone spray is your friend. Our couplers are extremely heavy duty, therefore they don't flex like the factory ones do. And the silicone just helps everything slide together and just makes your life a lot easier. So silicone is the key. This is not PB Blaster, WD-40, any petroleum based stuff, it's silicone. So you can be very liberal with it. It's not gonna impact the coupler's ability to hold boost. You do not need hairspray for these guys. Your clamps are totally responsible for holding everything together. So I just like to put this thing on the end of the charge tube the majority of the way. So push it on to where there's about, you know, you can leave about an inch hanging off the end and then I have the logo kind of pointing up the same way I had that C-clip. So now we're ready to set it on the truck and like I said I'm going to put a little silicone on the O-ring and the turbo outlet as well. So now we're ready to go ahead and push this thing on the turbo. One thing that's really important to remember is just O-ring connections in general need to be aligned pretty good. And so I want to set this thing down 
I got it kind of just barely slid on the turbo now, and I'm going to align it with the intercooler. That way, that kind of pre-aligns this whole tube to align with the compressor outlet. It's just really important. If you get it crooked, you're going to have a, a lot harder time getting the O-ring to stretch over the compressor housing. So if you have it lined up, it should really not be a big issue. And right there, you saw that C-clip expanded and then fell right back in the groove. So now you know that thing's in there. If you want, you can give it a good yank back and make sure, but that guy's nice and seated on there. Now I can take my coupler and just slide it off onto the intercooler. You can get your logo lined up and then I'll slide my clamps right into place where they're supposed to go. A quick note on your clamp orientation, I like to set up my T-bolts so they're here on the back side pointing straight up. This connection here around the intercooler is pretty open but this one up here on the tube is, is pretty tight. You have this wire track here, upper radiator hose there. It's still better for these to have the T-bolt on the back side of this connection as well. On this particular part number, I prefer to take the T-bolt clamp apart. It's just a lot easier to deal with. You can kind of rotate it up like that, slide it into place, get your kind of clamp assembled. and then you can rotate it down to where this T-bolt is not touching your harness track. If you get in the right orientation there, you have about a good quarter inch to three eighths gap there. You should have any problems with rubbing. And then both your nuts are really easy to get to with your socket and you can tighten it super easy. So I do my, you know, the majority of my tightening with the impact and then I'll come back with a, a ratchet afterwards and do your final torque. So there you have it. Obviously a very simple install, minimal tools required. Now that we have both charge tubes replaced, we pretty much have fixed our charge tube failure points on this truck. Um, go check out our site. We continually add answers to FAQs, details, things like that to it. If you can't find the answer to what you're looking for there, we're here for you. Shoot us an email, give us a call, and thanks for watching.